What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here, here to bring you guys a little bit of smile in this otherwise pretty shitty world things have been going on in. Um, well, this one's a little bit of a scare thing. Alright, so we've got logs from the Lookout Part 2 by Plant, okay? This guy's been doing some really cool stuff here. Alright, and I have been liking... This is like a series. He's already got like a Part 3 out. So, um, yeah. So let's check this out, see what he, see how this is going. So this is like a series he's doing. I think this is pretty badass. So let's see what we got here. All right, and go. It's been a little over a week since I have arrived at this tower. Dude, a week of isolation like that, honest, I would really screw with your head. This life really isn't for the faint of heart. No, it The isn't. solitude that was once a welcome to respite from the hustle and bustle of civilization was starting to take its toll on me. Humans are social creatures by nature, and if it wasn't for my coworkers yeah, right. in Towers 7 and 9 respectfully, I might have begun to lose my mind. Tell that to everybody who holds up in their room for dramatic, days on end. Ah, there is that'd be fairly nice. extensive psychological assessment in jobs such as these, at least for the organization I work for. I wouldn't have come all the way out here if I didn't think I could handle it. That being said, thinking back on what I had experienced on my first night, I honestly thought a screw might have come loose somewhere in my mind. There was obviously no creepy <laughs> man-creature carrying a lantern around the forest. I was randomly stirred awake in the middle of the night, and in my overly groggy state, my brain fabricated this person from the darkest reaches of my sure imagination. It That's what I've been telling sure. myself, at least. Yeah, keep telling yourself in that. In the Spanky. days since then, I haven't experienced another nightly visitor. This only seemed to reinforce my belief that it was a figment conjured by fatigue. I have, however, spotted that odd red light moving in the woods at night. Yeah. I didn't see it every single night. And on the nights that I did, I tried my best to dismiss it. Probably one of the other watchers investigating the surrounding area. As unlikely as that Why would they use sounded, a red light, though? It did help to calm me down for the most part. The days that passed have been largely uneventful. Thankfully, I had the foresight to bring along a few books to read with all the downtime. I spent the majority of my time just relaxing in the tower, reading and chatting with my tower friends. Whenever I did leave They're the safety of the tower, dead. I never traveled too far. I always Good. stayed within visual range of it at all times, never extending myself farther than my sprinting capacity would allow. While I had no That's particular smart, reason actually. to investigate my surroundings, it was a nice change of pace from the confines of the glass walls. On the sixth day out there, the same man who had dropped me off at the tower showed up to deliver some supplies. Of course, I had brought enough rations to last my entire stay out here. But the wildlife hey, reserve was sure to some keep the tower never a bad stopped. thing. Yeah. I'll be honest. Seeing him was a much welcome sight. We chatted for a bit, and while he was as stern and as quiet as ever, I still enjoyed his company. He asked me how things were going out here, and I assured him that everything was fine. He unloaded a few boxes from Damn, the back of his truck strong. <laughs> before heading off to Tower 9. To deliver the last of the supplies. <laughs> That's they get the point. I think oh, for the, the items caring and animation, again, man. He disgustingly cleared his throat, <laughs> nodded to me, and drove off. Try, at least he didn't try to shake your hand. On the <laughs> seventh night, yeah, I hate that when I was people lounging do that. on the people outer do of the it's tower, gross, staring man. up like, at the beautiful night the sky above. I was finishing up the last bit of soup I had made earlier when my eyes drifted from the partially soup cloudy sky on. to the forest below. In the forest, I could see that glow once again. It drifted between and around multiple trees. Honestly, it became such a common occurrence that I didn't think too much about it. Hmm. It drifted farther and farther away from my tower. Eventually, I picked up my binoculars and looked at it. Typically, that light only remained illuminated for a short period of time. A few minutes max. This time, it didn't. The dull glow lingered and drifted along. I dropped my binoculars and looked back up at the a sky, will -o -wisp, maybe? utterly disregarding it. Then, around 20 minutes later, my radio in the tower crackled to life. It was Peter from Tower 7, 
He was what asking if all of us there? were still awake. I stood up from my chair and moseyed inside. Responding what was he message. didn't say? He was asking if either of us could see this weird red light outside of his tower. Katie didn't respond. We just thought she had gone to bed for the night. Oh, I, on shit. the other hand, stared at the receiver. I'm not sure why I was so concerned in that moment. It was just a random light in the woods. It wasn't something to be terrified of. Are you However, sure? How the hell do you the know? The fact that Peter was validating something I had personally experienced seemed to send a chill down my spine. I responded truthfully to Peter, telling him that I've been seeing that light intermittently ever since I arrived at the tower. <laughs> he asked me why I never reported it, and honestly, I just told him because I thought it was one of them. He then asked me if I thought he should go investigate it, no. which I advised against. No. I told him just to lock his tower's door and remain inside for the night. He seemed mildly concerned about the situation, but I feel after speaking with me, he managed to compose himself. He mentioned that he was heading to bed, and I did the same. Yeah. At roughly 2.30 in the morning, I was awoken by the distant sound of a gunshot Whoa. echoing across the forest. Shit got real. In any other circumstance, there would have been no way I could have heard something like that. But after that first night, sound travels. the conversation I had with Peter earlier, I went to sleep on a razor's edge. I probably could have heard a pin drop a mile away. So a gunshot was more than enough to pull me from my dream. They can get pretty damn quiet out there, too. I quickly and sat up and grabbed also. the radio, asking what had happened. But in the back of my mind, I already knew that one of my tower mates probably encountered the same thing I did. Though, I honestly didn't want to believe it. After a few painstaking minutes passed by, Peter's voice poured through the speaker. He said that he saw something climbing up his tower. He sounded panicked and distraught. He said that when it was going for his tower's door, he grabbed his shotgun and fired at it. Once the Damn. smoke cleared, however, there was no sign of it anywhere. It was just gone. Just a pile of broken glass. He cursed himself for making such a rash decision. He went to see if whoever it was had fallen from the tower. When he walked outside and looked over the edge, there was nothing. Nobody and no sign anyone had been outside of his tower. Hoovy Dundee. Since then, Peter has been making nightly radio checks to both me and Katie. His decision to fire his gun left him without a window in his tower. Oh, the shit. The thin barrier that protected him from the elements outside had been torn down, and I think that realization was starting to set in. The night following that event, as I stood on the balcony looking around... Put something over it, dude, or push something against it. I saw it. no sign of that dull red glow in the forest below. It was truly as if it had never existed in the first place. I felt at peace once more to not have this feeling in the back of my mind. However, something happened last night that I feel needs to be addressed. I was using the outhouse late one evening at the base of the tower. <clears throat> I stepped outside and was about to make my way back up when I heard something. It sounded like heavy footsteps moving in the trees next to me. Like something large was shuffling around. Even with my flashlight cutting through the darkness, Couldn't see shit. there was no sign of anything in the woods. My first instinct was that it was a bear coming to forage in this area at night for potential food. I continued to scan around. But that place smells like ass! As an unsettling sensation began to creep in the back of my mind. Similar to when I would spot that glowing red light. However, this time... felt different. It felt darker. More ominous. Dangerous. I was trying to force my legs to sprint up the tower as fast as I could, but I found myself unable to move. I continuously shifted my light around, hoping and praying I wouldn't see anything out of the ordinary. When oh, suddenly, oh, oh. a loud cracking of twigs to my right sent me into a mad dash up the stairs. <laughs> I had never climbed a set of stairs that fast in my life <laughs> exactly, before. Exactly, man. Your ass will When move. I arrived at the top, I locked the door and stayed awake the entire night with the shotgun <laughs> resting comfortably nearby. This morning, when I went downstairs to survey the surrounding area, 
I saw where that noise had been made. A large tree, which had been no further than six feet away from me at the time, had a bunch of broken twigs at its base. There were large scratch marks embedded into the tree itself. Oh, crap. And in that the would... soft ground below... Oh, okay, that's not a bear. ...were two footprints. Oh. They appeared strangely human, albeit slightly longer. The indent that had been left in their wake seemed to signify something heavy left those prints. I don't know if this had been made by the thing that carried that lantern, or if it's something different entirely. All I know is, there is something strange happening in these woods, and I feel like myself and the other watchers are bystanders caught in the middle of it. We still have another There's 20 days left There's a lot of weird shit woods, out there. And I just hope we can make it to the end before something truly bad happens <laughs> that's a pretty good one um so yeah i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that this is a cool story he and this guy he animates these things very well i love his stuff so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed that uh like this video subscribe uh definitely click on the link to the original like the original and subscribe to plant if you haven't guys it's such a weird name plant it's just plant that's his name plant just plant Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.